This is the moment of worship. God is able to do anything. Anything. Ask for it. Let's do it.
by sending his son Christ Jesus to reconcile us back to him again. And for that he deserves it. All the honor, all the praise, and all the glory. Father, you deserve it.
going to have to wear in this minister, Sharon Lewis, and then the Ministry of Giving, Mother Sandra Fulmore, in that order, please. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. I'm going to be reading the um, Klein for Klein Comfort, Little Sister and Woman Comfort 2023. Sunday, April 23rd, 2023 at 3.30 p.m. Theme, you changed it to four? Okay. Theme, overcoming guilt and shame to walk in God's calling. Conference scripture, John 4, 28 through 29. Pre-climb, upcoming events. Motherboard, prayer breakfast, Saturday, February 25th. 2023 at 10 a.m. The Power of Prayer and Unity, Friday, March 10, 2023 at 7.30 p.m. Speaker, Lady Judy Johnson, Spreading the Love in the Community, Saturday, April 15, 2023 at 11 a.m. Intercessory Prayer at 10.30 a.m. Sunday School, Sunday, April 23rd, 2023. Classics, men, women, primary, and young adults. Okay. Next, a day of celebration. Little Sister in Roman Comfort 2023 at 4 p.m. Speaker, D. Andre Thomas. Little Sister Pearl of Character Ceremony. All women are asked to pay their assessment of $100. Please see Mother Lois Jones. Free program, women are asked for $25 donations. Next, um, volunteers are needed for the client committee. The, follow, the following are um, on the um, volunteer list. Sister Benita William, Dr. Lee, Sister Sharon Lewis, Mother Shepherd, Mother Fulmore, Lady Browning, me, Sharon Elliott, and Sister Tonya Caldwell. These are the uh, uh, kind of announcements. Good afternoon, church. I will be coming before you because I was asked about uh, speaking on mental health. I like to say behavioral health because mental health, when people hear that, it's like a stigma. So I prefer behavioral health. So I'm going to speak to you all about anxiety. We all we all have at a certain point of anxiety. So we shouldn't be ashamed of it. There are different types of anxiety. I'm just gonna talk on at least what, five or six, but there are more than that. And anxiety is no joke. So you say, Minister Sharon, or Sister Sharon, what is anxiety? Anxiety is considered a mental health disorder characterized by feelings of worry or fear that are strong enough to interfere with one's daily activities. Um, you can be used to doing something, but if you have, if you're worrying about something, for example, how your rent is gonna get paid, your mortgage is gonna get paid, where you're gonna get that money to buy groceries for your family, all of that, that falls under anxiety because you're worrying and you're not gonna be able to function like you would normally function. So then I said anxiety disorders differ from normal feelings of nervousness and anxiety. Um, and, it involve, and it involves excessive fear because we don't know. And being a Christian, we tend to fear before we believe in God. And God's word is we are to come to him for everything and trust in him that he will supply all of our needs. 
it's tight up in here, you guys, a real body, but that's the truth. That is God's words. We are supposed to come to him. Okay, I'm not preaching, I'm just here to talk about mental health. All righty. Um, also, anxiety, now this is what I found out. I did not know this in the many years I've been in um, mental health. Anxiety can be inherited. So having a family history of anxiety may increase your chances of developing it at some point in your life. I did not know that. Anxiety, again, can be normal, can be a normal part of life when faced with stressors such as changes in relationships, presenting um, in front of a crowd, like I am now, a little nervous, I don't know why. Um, yes, I am. That's it, Pastor that's it. <laughs> um, also, when anxiety is present, it, it can interfere with, like I said before, your daily functions. It can be a symptom of behavioral health diagnosis. There are several types of anxiety. One, general anxiety disorder, also known as GAD, G-A-D. Panic disorder, social anxiety disorder, obsessive compulsive disorder, I know we know some people like that. Post-traumatic stress uh, disorder, and just to name a few others, but again, there are so many out there. Um, generalized GAD is just, it characterizes uh, by stress, persistence, and excessiveness in worrying. It interferes with your daily activities. This is an ongoing worry and tension may be accomplished by physical symptoms such as restlessness, feeling on edge, or easy fatigue. Um, panic disorder. That is characterized by regular and sudden panic attacks. It is normal to feel anxious and panicky and and respond to stressful or dangerous stimuli or situations. But for people with panic disorder, the panic attacks occur regularly and at any time. They have no control over it. It can happen at any time. So and we don't know what trigger, uh, triggers this. So it's, I mean, you can have it again at any time. Then you have the social anxiety. Um, this is an intense, persistent fear of being watched and judged by others. This fear can affect work, school, and daily activities. It can even make it hard to uh, make friends and trust people. The good news is social anxiety disorder is treatable. But I want you all to keep in mind, regardless of what anxiety I am speaking of, all of the anxieties can be treated, okay, with, with the proper uh, therapist, such as our first lady, or a psychiatrist. You may need to take medication. Some form of anxiety is totally different. Each individual is totally different, okay? Then we have the obsessive compulsive disorder. Hmm. This type is defined as frequent unwanted thoughts, also known as obsession. That's what I've known it for. That cause people to engage in repetitive behaviors. <clears throat> anyway, post-traumatic stress disorder. <laughs> Some of you all caught that. <laughs> post-traumatic stress disorder. According to the National Institute of Mental Health, Post-traumatic uh, stress disorder is a disorder that develops in some people who have experienced a shocking, scary, and or dangerous event. So that's just the post. And then, I'm gonna zoom down here. Common signs of anxiety. This is just some. Feeling weak or tired, trembling, sweating, breathing rapidly, hyperventilating, um, feeling nervous, breast, recklessness, or tense. Now there are emotional signs of uh, signs of anxiety: short temper, mm. feeling sad or down, stress, difficult falling asleep, emotional pain, suicidal thoughts. And I want to touch on suicidal thoughts. The devil is busy, especially with our young teens, our young people. And it's being posted more and more on social media about suicide thoughts. 
if you know someone that has suicidal thoughts or yourself, don't be ashamed to ask for help. Do not, I repeat, do not be ashamed to ask for help. The people that you ask for help, you'll be surprised. They want to help you. So don't be ashamed. Call 911, call our first lady, call the pastor, mother, father, sister, sibling, call someone. Um, there are physical signs of anxiety, nauseous, shortness of breath, diarrhea, again, sweating. And then we have the panic attacks. The panic attacks cannot be controlled. They happen when you least expect them. Um, they cause dizziness, they accelerate the heart, nausea, um, trouble breathing. You just you just don't feel right. But again, when you're having a when a person is having a panic attack, don't judge them. Be sensitive to what they're going through because they can't control it. And I found that a lot of people are starting from what I see are having anxiety. Every day that I go to work, I see I'm scheduling anxiety, anxiety. Do you need a therapist? Do you need medication? Tell me about your anxiety. What are you having so that I know how to help? Because it is serious and it can cause health risks, health problems. So be, I'm not gonna say be, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Be aware of people that you encounter, that you interact with, be there for them. If you know that they're having some type of problem, be there for them. There are four levels of anxiety, I'm almost finished firstly. There's uh, four levels of anxiety, you have the mild, the moderate, severe, and of course, panic level, and that is the highest. Um, again, fear of death, rapid breathing, nausea, heart palpations. Now, I want to read this. In people with panic disorder, panic attacks usually last around 10 minutes and can occur unexpectedly. That's just like a person having a seizure. Similar. Panic attacks triggers vary from person to person, so it's helpful to work with a therapist and or a mental health specialist to determine what these triggers are. Studies have shown that 67% of ages 18 to 24 with anxiety and or depression still do not seek treatment. They're ashamed. They don't want to go to nobody. But if you need it, I'm repeating, if you know someone that needs it or you need it, do not be ashamed to come forth for the help that you may need. Um, it is common in the preteens and teenagers. Um, let's see here. I'm wrapping it up. What causes it? Again, stress. And if you are a young adult and you've been traumatized and as a young, a young adult or as a child, that can cause anxiety. But let me give you some, some coping strategies. Keep active, exercise, eat well, eat healthy, laugh more, spend time with your family and friends, doing activities you enjoy. And what I use a lot is the breathing exercise. There is a breathing exercise that you can do that will help. And then I'm gonna leave you guys with this. Anxiety disorder, are the most common of medical disorders and affect nearly 30% of adults at some point in their lives. But anxiety disorders are treatable and a number of effective treatments are available. Treatment help most people lead normal, productive lives. We have someone who you can speak with, again, our first lady. And as you guys walk out today, I'm gonna ask, if it's not for you, still take one. It may be somebody that God is putting in your pathway to give one of these to. Don't, don't be shy about picking up one. Even though I work in the field, 
I'm still going to go out and I'm going to get two more because I have friends that need it. And I know that they're not going to want to come to my job. So guess what? I'm referring them to our first lady. She has a heart of compassion. She loves kids. And inside of the pamphlet, it tells you all what she does. Little kids, they suffer from anxiety as well. Our teenagers with social media, they want to fit in with their friends. So pick it up. I beg of you, pick one of these up. If not for yourself, for someone that you might come in contact with. First lady, I thank you for allowing me to do this.
none of us were on the program on at the funeral except myself who was doing the eulogy and a resolution being read by Sister Burns. But that's the way it is. We're going to another church. We're going to do what they do. When you come here, you do what we do. That's just the way churches work. So uh, please help me out because I want the Friday night service to be a celebration of life of someone who's dear to us. Amen? Amen. So uh, I think we did that for Sister Frazier too, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. So it's nothing new. Uh, we can do that. Uh, so please uh, help me out. Meet me for about probably seven or eight minutes uh, following this service. Sure. On Saturday, if you're coming to the funeral, don't go down to Hammondville. Take Atlantic to Dixie and then come in about uh, two blocks okay. because the roads will be shut down okay. in advance of what you know. Okay. The roads will be shut down. So we can go 95 to Atlantic. Yes, to go Dixie, east, Dixie. which is to the right, to Dixie, right. and go left, which is to the north. Right. Don't two streets. Yes, just stay away from Hammond. Gotcha. That's easy, man. Okay. It's been over here. All right, I'm finished. Thank you. Let's go in ourselves accordingly. Right now, we're going to have introduction of our speaker by Farrah Missionary Jamie Graham, and we have solo by Minister Joe Lewis, and the Word of God by our own First Lady, Aurelia Bryant. Amen. Amen. I'm here to actually introduce the speaker. She is approximately 20 years in faith-based community. She also counsel at risk teenagers, single parents, and empowering women, giving, giving them their voice back. Her passion is to see others reach their full potential that motivated her to return to college to pursue of her bachelor's degree in organizing leadership. Also earning her master's in mental health. She also um, advancing her learning in domestic violence, anger management, behavior management, trauma, and major depression. One of her favorite scriptures is when she thinks of the goodness of Jesus and all he has done for her. Her soul cries out. After the Salmonic solo, you will hear our first lady, Olivia Christ.
for another day and just for allowing us to see another day to wake up this morning. So God, we say thank you. God, as we go boldly before the throne and deliver your word, we ask that you hide us behind the cross. That the people will not see the ability of So back in the day, 
she was cast aside, she was rejected, and she was pushed apart. So, so, so just imagine her going through this for 12 years and her being rejected. Her spending all of her money. And the doctors tell her, there's nothing that we can do. And so even if she wanted to be have some comfort with someone or somebody to give her a hug, she was cast aside. Yes. So when she's cast aside, what does that do? I'm not going to stay with these notes, so you just know that part. When you cast aside, When we're cast aside, sometimes we feel alone, right? And we feel like nobody else cares, right? We're coming to the church, and we look good, we smell good, but nobody knows the struggles that have been through, right? And so as I talk about this woman with the issue of blood for 12 years, right? And some of us, we go through struggles Mama Issa been through some struggles for a long time, about six months or a little longer. And we go through it. But it doesn't always feel good. So just imagine with me with this woman that's going through her issues and not only just the bleeding of 12, 12 long years, you know, and, and the stench that came from her situation. Because all of us got situations that we're trying to go through. But her situation began to stink. She began to feel alone. The scripture doesn't tell you that. But can we imagine that if, if we bled for 12 long years? This missionary knows about bleeding. She knows about her cancer. Am I right, this missionary? It's a weakness. And we feel like there's nobody there. We know God is there. But the thought of just not knowing and the pain of just being rejected, abandoned, and nobody coming to see her about her. She didn't have anybody. So she's left alone in her pain. Not just her physical pain, but her emotional pain. She's left there. She's depressed. She feels like nobody cares. And that's like some of us. We don't tell nobody, but we're going through something. And I say, don't quit. Don't quit. But she heard that there was a man coming in town. And this man had the answer, Sister Sharon. He had the answer. But it wasn't easy for her to get to him. Because she had to do some things. That was a huge crowd, Brother Tony. It's a huge crowd. And she had to push. So what are you saying, Aurelia? What are you what are you saying? Right? It's not comfortable. We have to push. We have to push. We have to push. We have to push. Right? We have to push. We have to push through all those hard times, those tribulations, those rejections. How am I going to pay my bill? I just lost my sister. How do I push through district missionary? Because I come to church every Sunday. I come to church every Sunday. And each time I come to church, Sister Benita, I say today is the day that I'm going to give my deliverance. But I go out the same way I came. Now that's not an indictment on God. That's us not surrendering everything to God. So if we go back 
to the one on with the issue of blood who had to fight through the crowd. And when I say fight through the crowd, I'm talking about all of the distraction that comes along in life. When families aren't getting along, that is a distraction. When mothers and daughters aren't getting along, that is a distraction. And we feel like like this woman with the issue of love, distributionary. Nobody cares. Wow. Wow. Nobody cares. Don't they see that I'm suffering and that I'm going through? Can somebody just speak to my pain? She was tired, this visionary. She was tired. And then on top of that, when the doctor said there was nothing else that they could do, she got worse. But she never gave up. This is so personal to me because we think that it's a People out in the world that's suffering, it's us. And then we don't tell anybody, so we suffer alone. I sat there, this missionary, and I talked to some Christians last week that didn't have any hope. I said, Well, how did you get here? And you know what they say? I don't know, but you know. And I just begin to let people talk. Because people need to talk yeah. without people judging them. They need to talk. I don't need you to tell me, well, you're, where's your faith? I don't need to hear that part. But I need somebody to be able to listen to me until I get to where you are. Yes. So if we're spiritually strong in the faith, and even if you're spiritually strong in the faith, you still need somebody to lean on to too. Yes. We gotta be there for each other. And I laid there with this missionary and I thought about this mess and I said, you know what, I'm not coming. You know, because I, well, I wasn't feeling good. And I said, but I know the trick of the enemy. That was a distraction for me. And it was easy for me to say, I'm not coming. But God said, don't quit. But if the message is don't quit, it's not just for you, it's for me too. So as your first lady, sometimes I have to encourage myself not to quit. We're human. We're going to have some difficult times. It's going to get hard. The woman with the issue of it. And as she pressed her way through, through the crowd, to touch the hem of his garment. Yes. So, my question to you is when you find yourself up against a wall, a rock in a hard place, where do you go? Where do you go? Do you lean into Jesus? Right? I am worse. But I still got to connect with someone. Like God created us to be in relationship. We are not on an island by ourselves. We're not by ourselves. So if I reach out to you and I'm saying, how are you doing? I'm blessed and highly favored. That's wonderful. That's a good quote. How you really do And so many of us hide behind that. And we're hurting. We're hurting. And then we, we get to the end of the cliff and we keep taking those. I do it right there at the end. But God sent somebody. And you didn't say anything. 
And you said, I'm blessed and I'm highly favored. God sent somebody. One of my clients talked about, she said, Miss Amelia, she said, I wanted to get in touch with my authentic self, my real self. How many of you are desiring to get in touch with your real self? And so when we're in, getting in touch with our real self, we're surrendering everything <laughs> to God. Yes. So we're naked and we're stripped from Everything. Stripped. We're naked. I can't depend on my degrees. I can't depend on what I look like. I can't depend on my beauty. But what does your authentic self look like? When's the last time you saw her? When's the last time you saw him? We hide behind so many things. You know, we hide behind so many things. Talking to my sister yesterday, and uh, I got a couple of sisters. Two sisters that, three, I have two sisters that lost their sons, murdered. Well, one was murdered, and one died of a drug. I can't imagine the pain that they've been through. Can't imagine. But I, I saw their faith. My older sister, Tony, I saw she had to go and view her son. That was shot in the face. She had to view that. But I saw when it came time for them to funeralize his body that his dad did the eulogy. And here's this mom standing over his body. I saw that, I saw that thing. And then I saw, as the time went on, I saw her break out. I don't care what your faith is. There was some pressing that needed to take place. And I heard from my sister. She would call me this missionary. And I just sit here. And I didn't, I, I was helpless. But I knew that I needed to press in for her and lift her up. Because when we're weak in the faith, we gotta grab a hold of somebody that's strong. I need somebody to be able to get me through. And as I began to pray for my sister, and this she still struggles. But she's able to manage. She's able to manage. I pray for my sister and my brother all, all the time. And then there's my younger sister. And you guys heard me tell the story of him dying during the pandemic over a drug overdose. And what I know is, is that there was a lot of life that was lost. And my sister's watching. She called and talked to me yesterday. And he was able to save three lives. My sister was strong. But yesterday she called me, Mother Lisa. And she said, it's just so hard doing it. So what do you do when you have a family member that's struggling? Can do anything. I could just listen to her. And I tell my baby all the time, my sister, I don't know what that pain's like. I don't. I don't know what that pain's like. And that's a heavy pain to carry. No, sometimes we think well, we shouldn't say that, we shouldn't say that. That's how we grow. That's how our faith is strengthened. And as this woman pressed through the crowd, the distractions, she touched the hem of his coat. 
Jesus. And she was made whole instantly. So my question to you is, how many of you desire to touch the hem of his garment today? Because he's here. And how we touch to see the woman with the issue of blood. Somebody go get Mother Adams. I want Mother Adams to stay with me. There, there. God is able to do more than we can ever think of. We simply have to give it to Him. It's been long, it's been hard. And I started out and I said this message was for my sister. Mother Adams know how much I love her too. And I don't desire for her to be hurting either. But like the woman with the issue of blood, who touched the hem of his garment. And instantly she was made whole. <laughs> instantly. Jesus. I don't know about you, but I'm still believing that miracles are still happening today. Believe miracles are still happening. Stop walking with me, Mom. And what I know is, it's like, talk to you, Mom. I love you. And I want you to know we're going to keep walking. We're going to walk. Because I know you think about Sister Arkisha. Got you. Got you. All this time is you by yourself lying down. Deacon Adam, I see you there. But I'm talking about mama. They, they, I just miss my baby. But what if we got away from all the distractions? Showing up and say, Well, came to church. But we go back out the same way we came. So today is your day. Your number is up. So God said, I desire to know you, your real self, your authentic self. I desire to know you better. And the way for me to know you better is for you to take off some of the weight. The woman with the issue of blood. As she pressed her way. I'm going to ask if you would just come to the altar. I'm not praying for you. If you would come to the altar. Remember altar call? Okay, let's have an altar call. So it's just you and God. You and God. You and God. And to my sister. This is for you. I 
supernatural world the garment the hymn that part that got the last anointing you my friends became sons and daughters of God doesn't mean that you won't get a bump along the way or even roll off a cliff but what it does mean is that he gives you the power and authority to choose which way to go. Hallelujah. This is a great thought in your mind today to know that you not only have the way, you have the authority to demand Satan to get thee behind it. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give God a hand for us. Hallelujah. 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 All right. 
anything else? Uh, uh, not all. Oh, I want to say is, we, have we scheduled on when is our next me, me, monthly men's meeting? Did we schedule one? Would you do that for me and get it done so that we can strengthen our men through associating with one another? It's really important because the enemy is, you just look out, we're outnumbered about five to one or more. And we've got to do what God sent us to do. Not only to work, but in the spirit, protect the daughters. All of the daughters, old and young. That's what we're called to do. You've been given bodily strength to be used to edify and empower the church. And God addressed the church as a bride. So the church, if you go to classify it, would be female. <laughs> Just so you know what you're called. You look a little deeper, you know, when God said, but I want you to know something. I don't recognize anymore male, female, Greek, or Jew. That's what he's talking about. Well, he don't recognize. Because he's looking at the spirit. And there is no difference in the spirit realm. But he's given you a body to operate in this world male or female. And they have different assignments. And glory to God, the women are holding up most of their part. They were designed and equipped to be mothers and to have that emotional love that only mothers can have, whether it's their own child or somebody else's. They're designed that way. Yeah. Men pat them on the head, okay, here's a dollar. But women nurture them. You, know, you say, well, some don't. Some don't know how. Because you didn't teach them. You didn't pass it down. I heard, I heard talk about the hereditariness of anxiety. Well, it maybe there's hereditary, some hereditary tendency of not caring. Just ignore it. I'm not being real. So these are the things we've got to correct. So, men, uh, so all of you that, that I asked to see for a moment associated with the death of Sister Rogers, see me just up here, Joe, just for a moment. And you have to take this down. Sure. We are all pressed for time, but really quick, I meant what I said. I need for each and every one of us on our way out, if not one, two or three, if you don't need it for yourself, give it to someone that you think may need it. And this is for our viewers. You can reach our first lady at 754 249 6359. Again, 754-249-6359. If you are thinking about suicide, if you have any of the anxieties that I've mentioned, if you feel that you may have mental health or behavioral health, so um, you can call our first lady. She's here not just for us, but for you, our viewers, as well as the people on the outside that hear my voice. Amen. We do not judge. People of God, we do not judge because only God is our judger. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Lee, can you. Can you focus something this long? No, okay. Well, when you get a chance, you can put that uh, QR code on uh, the broadcast so that people can just simply Scan that and you know, have all the information. Thank you. Okay. Uh, yes, ma'am.
or we want to let them know by our encouragement and our testimony that we are there for them. And if they need us for anything, we will, you know, we can come and help them out. So those are the two participants, uh, uh, the two people that we want to minister to right now until I can think of a third. Okay. Until I can think of a third. All right. Thank you. All right. While we get in touch with you all, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Missionary. Just know behind the scenes there's work going on. Maybe you're not a upfront person, but you can be a part of behind the scenes work. Uh, and then, please know when, when Elder Eason sets that time and need you here, at least come to the first one so you can make a decision whether you want to come back or not. You know, you, you can't give up on something you don't even know. Then you can try. Uh, we need to empower one another. Amen. Can I just say something really quick? And I just to try here. My heart has just been out for He certainly, I would encourage him to come and uh, anybody else that, you know, they've got to be of a reasonable age, uh, age of understanding, let's say, and then uh, he certainly can be with us. Uh, we have uh, raised the age of accountability so much that kids shooting folks because they're not 18 yet, you know, so that's, that's, that's us, we get that. Yeah, we get that. And so it's good, you know, uh, we should make the men and women, because women do it too now, when they're young, so they can grow into being a man or woman, not fall into it by dates and calendars. But anyway, I'm finished. Thank God, Sister Crystal, and your family, and Brother Fremont. Yeah, amen. Amen. Thank you. So happy to see him. I think about him often, and it's just not good to do that and not be able to do something about it. In my younger days, I was a father. And, and be that person who spiritually went after him. Whatever is going on, you can still work it out. Whatever it is. So that, that's, so uh, this afternoon, uh, Anita is dancing. She needs your support. Amen. Brother Tony is speaking. We need your support. Come on. Also, Pastor, Miss Jen is doing free worship. Oh, yeah. Okay, so we're asking everybody to come. I know it's Super Bowl, so we're going to get out early. I already know that part. Okay, but uh, I'll stand with you, please. Amen. Also, I need to see Lex Jen real very quickly in the choir stand after service. Okay. As we, as we leave. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So this is what I just want you to me remember a couple of things. Don't quit. And this week, get in touch with your authentic self. Who are you? Okay? You're not your car. You're not your job. You're not grandmama's daughter. You know, who are you? Okay? So let's spend some time with God today. I mean, this week, a lot of us do it anyway. But I really want you to get in touch with who you are. Amen? God bless you. Amen. Amen. And we thank God for our two mommies that's sitting there. And my, and my grandmommy back there, too, that looks like my grandma, too. So I've got a special place in my heart. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we just thank you for this time. God, I thank you for our congregation. I thank you that we got a family here, that we love one another. God, I thank you that we will continue to pull on each other. I thank you for our district missionary just having a heart to reach out for people that are hurting, women that are hurting, men that are hurting, God. 
God, help us never to be ashamed that when we're struggling, that we can touch our brother and touch our sister. And God, as we move this place, leave this place, but never in your presence. Be with this guy that us, protect us, protect our children. In the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Amen.